Hello, beautiful world. Oh, whoa, I almost lost you there. Okay, back. We're gonna turn here, and we're gonna talk about fractal structure with the triadic coil. Yeah. So we got the triadic coil. This is a new one I made. Copper wrapped around aluminum. It's the same one I had before, just a different copper winding. And to explain how I connected the copper to itself is because this is multi-stranded, I take a few strands of each side and twist them together instead of twisting all the strands together once instead of all these little knots um, so it's a lot smaller instead of having a big knot like hanging off the side um, and so, ta-da! Um, okay, so where to? We're going to talk about boundary layers, okay? Now, when you saw the triad coil before, I was telling you how the ratio was this little donut right here, okay? And so, as this one right here, we got that ratio. Well, same one that's in my uh, triadic flow animation. Consider that the boundary layer, okay? It's the basis for fractal structures. Um, and that uh, when you apply it, okay, I usually would think about it, this was the ratio of the coil. But the thing is, the, the coil also allows, you can say, for two more spheres, if you consider this to be a sphere or a circle, inside of it. It's a two to one ratio. Um, and it then occurred to me that what I was imagining this whole time was this structure inside of it, as depicted in my yin yang flow animation, where really I was missing that it can also be on the outside too. And you're creating this, this fractal structure in that, well, there's no true pure monopole in nature. There's only biased dipoles. Dipoles which are in balance and biased dipoles. And what we're doing is we're creating biased dipoles. And so a positive charge, say this being a positive charge, really consists of two positive charges on the outside spinning around a negative charge. And that negative charge consists of two negative charges spinning around a positive charge and so on, going on forever. This relates to quarks in protons and neutrons, such as a proton has two positive charges spinning around a negative charge, thus giving you a positive charge differential. Okay, um, and so what happens when you create this complete structure, you have a complete implosion of the magnetic field. So this right here are nested layers of diamagnetic fields and turtle magnetic fields and the external magnetic field is what you want to completely implode down to a singularity. Okay, there you go. Um, and what does that look just familiar of? Now I completely replicate the yin yang. It's the, uh, it's the exact same thing. It's the, it's the basis to a, a fractal structure. Um, it's also relates to, well yeah, as we've seen, you know, the Star of David. It's just the, it's the Star of David in 3D. Um, and the third one, the lovely flower of life. The flower of life, okay, you saw my firing sequence truck. Uh, of the triad coil, okay? This will also help me make this realization. That same picture is that layer essentially going around this, this hole. So each one of these little uh, eyelids, you could say, is like a circle. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six. This right here is the exact same thing as a yin yang. Um, it's just in uh, a different presentation. Um, and to explain some of the operations of it is, well, it's also, you know, the Orosboros. You have two polarized energies perpetually chasing each other. We're creating a cat and mouse game. That's all we're doing. Cat and mouse. So, uh, um, so to explain a little bit more in terms of how this works is, uh, let's talk about the Hall Effect. If you go into Wikipedia and look at the Hall Effect, there's a picture um, that shows the magnetic field and the current and the polarization of a, uh, charge on a plate, and such as bismuth, um, which exhibits the greatest Hall effect. And so it shows the electrons entering and curving down around and then exiting. Well, when they're curving down and around, you have positive potentials going up and curving around the other direction. Well, if you take that plate you know, and throw one of these guys in, rodent coil, any of these coils, that's what you want to happen. You're taking those energies and sending them in, but then throwing them into a vortex and they're never going to collide. You're never going to have collision of these potentials, which is what's really happening in electricity. And to explain the basic model, um, 
all right, and this is also how it replicate. Is say this is a, a cone, an inductor cone, right, wrapped, um, and this is another inductor cone wrapped, and then in the center you have a standing wave nodule. So you can see almost say these are like two pyramids, and this is your octahedron in the center, and these are your your coils or your star coils. We you know been using this little guy like right here, um, and the energy is getting is colliding, compressing in the center. And so you have your south magnetic energy, your north magnetic energy, and then your scalar energy, your overlapping sta energy, your standing wave um, in between the two. And what you can you can see example of this in nature or science experiment. And one of my favorites, which I've discussed before, I believe, you see two toroids colliding in with each other, and then converting from you can almost say like a first dimensional linear movement into a 2D planar movement. Okay, you're seeing energy move, two opposing energies of the same dimension moving to an upper level, upper higher level um, of dimensionality of existence, um, and that just doesn't go from the first dimension to the second dimension because I mean you're looking at those toroids in that video, it's really you're you know you're looking at fourth dimensional movement. Um, so, um, oh yeah, so to explain, uh, if you have a rotating coil, okay. Um, not the triad coil, because this is a little harder to explain this concept because it's the way the circuits are opposing on the ends. These are opposing circuits on the end. In a rotating coil, there's 12 points. And so the thing of just one circuit, those two tips on a circuit are opposing each other. So you could hook one up negative and one positive, and the energies would go in. But what makes it so the energies just go like and collide in you know, on the top? What makes them circle around? That's the Hall effect um, and the utilization of the Hall effect. Um, um, and another way you can say to, to fire this, I'd say more appropriately, and honestly I think there's a lot of ways to fire these, um, is you remember those little coin machine vortex things where you put coin in for like the donation, it'd spin around, and like disappear? Well, uh, doing like the same with that, and putting like a, a node up here, and a node up here, um, and firing down into them. And also, what happens is when they're, the charges are on top here instead of on the bottom, they're they're closer here, so they're naturally going to want to go forward instead of back because the positive and negative charges are going to be pulling each other um, closer. So it's it's in my opinion the best place to um, transfer energy onto the coil, unless you use um, a transformer and couple onto it. Um, and there's there's really lots of ways to do it, but that the basics basic idea that you can really imagine is you look at the Hall Effect picture on Wikipedia and just place replace the plate with one of these guys. You know, and then you got the uh, Oros Boros happening. Um, but as a note, the tricky thing about firing a rotating coil correctly involves 16 pulses. 16 negative charges, 16 pulse positive charges moving through it. Okay? Well this guy is one negative, one positive, so one pulse. Um, which makes it a little bit easier to use. Um, anyways, what else we have? Um, oh, so I'm just sharing, you know, another quickly, idea quickly. When you have these 6x6 six six maps, all right, um, I remember, I think Randy Powell talks about 9x9 nine nine maps when you do them the other way. And you can do these the other way. That Marco, Greg Volk, Randy Powell, how they all do their, their matrix maps. I just think this is easier. They really are the same thing. Um, in, in terms of laying them out, you're just sort of switching the way the boxes work. Um, and but if you think to me, the really uh, the spires is, is the simplest base, which is three by three. And these six by sixes consist of three, uh, three, three, or four three by threes. And this is this is Sudoku. You know, you got nine, you got your eight numbers around it, and you have a your positive and positive charge spinning around the center, which is the negative charge. Um, so that's the basis, you could say, of the vortexes. Um, the triac structure I was just showing you. Uh, anything else I want to get across? Oh! Um, I can't remember if I talked about this or not, but you know, the wire can be any size on this. Um, you're just you're setting up a you're setting up a fractal structure, and so the copper can be as big as you want, filling in that hole. Basically, the bigger the copper, the more the implosion. Um, however, the fractal structure can be created on the inside of the aluminum, 
One concept I, I've thought about is using copper and then aluminum is you have a golden ratio difference between conductivity. I also found the Hall effect. Really interesting. So like aluminum copper, really interesting in terms of that golden ratio um, and properties. But that being, the, alum the charge is going to have to move slower than the copper. This is the whole idea of energy levels with electrons in atoms. The farther energy level you go out, the more energy that's in it because they're moving faster. Um, because you have these three spinning together um, around the side. So the charge moving the aluminum has to move slower than the copper. And so I'm using my, intuitively I'm thinking the difference between those levels is the golden ratio. So using copper and aluminum. I've also made a, a, a mold with organite. I'm trying to remember if I talked about this already or not, because I made two videos and I ran out of time, so I might be repeating myself. But I made a organite mold with copper, aluminum, and sand with epoxy resin. Um, it's really, really nice. Um, I haven't wrapped it yet. Uh, we'll show you guys soon enough. Um, the, the idea, though, you're trying to set up a fractal structure in this median. Um, that keeps repeating down, you know, level from level within the core of these materials. Uh, is there anything else? I think I got, you know, the main big ideas out there. So, the way I see it, all the star coils allow for complete implosion into a singularity. The singularity is a singularity. It's one thing that always bugged me is why do these things have a big hole? It should just be, you know, like two circles. We should be completely imploding it. And they do. All of them completely implode. There's just different ratios. The rotating coil is a little bit more complex. And I'm working on an animation to show you the nested layers within a, a rotating coil. Um, and, however, I saved the best for last. Okay? Because we're talking all about these little coils. And, uh... What happens with superconductivity and, you know, with, with really cold temperatures is you're just, when the materials get that low in, in temperature, you're able to set these conditions so these Cooper pairs can form. But you can create geometry to, to replicate that too, which I'm going to do right now. So we've got some special type of poi. These are, um, weight, are stuffed with magnetite sand and quartz powder that I ground up myself. They're, they're pretty heavy. I've been playing with them a bit lately. This isn't the current construction I'm going to be working on, uh, or the future construction of, of poi. I'm going to be going a different route because the magnetite absorbs the magnetic field. So when I'm spinning it, you feel, um, it's, it's, it's like I'm spinning a black hole. I'm feeling the energy really get sucked into these things. You don't necessarily want to suck the energy into what you're spinning. You want to push everything around you. Um, so ideally you want these things to be superconducting. Um, uh, another concept is that guy over here. I don't know where it is, but like a staff. To imagine a staff in three parts. What you really want the staff to do is you almost want to have those three parts in between uh, the middle part on each end. You almost want to like diodes. And you want to have the, have the either ends become negatively charged and the center become positively charged. And you have that triac structure set up right there, spinning around. Same with poi, okay? When I'm doing a weave, okay, I got these Cooper pairs going. Back and forth, back and forth. Well, guess what happens when I make it 3D, all right? Um, music, please. There we go, okay? I'm in the center. I am the vortex. I am the diamond magnet. And that the magnetic field I'm creating is perpendicular to the Earth. And I'm amplifying it right now. I'm amplifying it dramatically. So much that uh, I'm getting a little bit of a head rush. So there you go. I hope, uh, I hope you can make your guys' day and get some people taste. Some people even smile. And who knows? Hopefully someone will get one of these things working properly sooner than later. such as actually imploding the energy around you. And what happens
means when you're close, you start to access zero point energy. So you can charge these guys up. And who knows, you might be seeing some you know, lightning effects and uh, you know, some kind of dragon ball Z. It's gonna be cool. But uh, until then, namaste.